So uh, they're bowling best of seven uh, for five hundred dollars. Um, Leonard, I'm gonna start with you. How do you think this is gonna go? What's your predictions for today? I'm gonna say seven because you know a lot of my matches go seven anyway. Okay, a lot of your matches go seven. All right, so hopefully you you'll not won't lose in seven. He all right. He, so he's saying seven. How many how many how many is it gonna take? What you gonna do to him? I say it's gonna take six. All right, so you're gonna win in six. You're gonna win in seven. You're both probably wrong. You're probably gonna sweep them in four. Hey, 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 hey. hey. you gotta keep that privilege at home. Though. If that happens, that's what's gonna happen. That's all right. But we look forward to a good match between the two of y'all. And um, best of luck to both of you. And seriously. All right, cool. Good job, guys. So, Ray, what do you think about this matchup? Um, well, we're expected to be pretty good, actually. Um, I think that uh, Leonard is definitely the more uh, vocal, the more entertaining um, of the two. So, with Leonard, it's, he, he's a... He's a He's a mixed bag. He's either going to, he can get crazy bowling really well. He can get crazy bowling awful. Right, um, he'll get crazy. Yeah, he, he, so he's just kind of crazy. I think that's what I think that's what Leonard is in like Portuguese or something. And we're going to start with the seventh pin from yeah. Dan Farrar. Even though Leonard Freeman is not starting this match, he'll be sitting there going, "Hmm, I can throw a strike. I can take the lead." Yep, and this is going to be very interesting being a lefty righty. And the fact that on 55, the lanes were on here, 55, 56, here at uh, Bolero Mechanicsville, is we do got the wall on the right a little bit. Um, so that, that might impact the lefty a little bit more than the Will Leonard, um, unless Leonard tries to walk a shot out into the wall, because he's not going to bust through it like a cartoon character. So I can see him walking into the wall. Well, some people would like to see him walk into a wall. So some people like to see him run into it and maybe embed himself in the wall. Yeah, and he's not going to bounce off of it. So it'll, it'll no, probably just not. knock him out unconscious. Yeah. So Dan Fowler starts with a spare. This is the first time that we're going to be seeing, in a very long time, I may add, this first time that we're going to be seeing Leonard Freeman. And I, actually, I think this is the Caffeine TV debut for Leonard Freeman, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, the, yeah, that is correct. First time out, we're going to see Free. Here's his first shot right now. And oh, well, all the pins went down. That's all good right. for him. So I think that what Leonard's doing here is Leonard's going to decide to make sure he's the best lefty on the pair. So well, I, I, he's I think definitely that's what he's doing. the best lefty on the pair after frame one of this game. That's right. That's right. So again, this is a best of seven matchup. Whoever gets to four games wins. Now, neither belt is on the line. What is on the line is the amount of money that is made in the World Championship Series between this point and now, and that is up for grabs. Half of that here at Mega Bowl, and the other half in August in Delaware at Battle Bowl. That is great. So this this match, this best of seven match, is for $500. And so it's a nice little chunk of change for somebody. Should have thrown that ball left-handed. Didn't yeah. try to aim for that left-hand pocket. Yeah. He, he had gotten he, that seven he, pin he down. He missed terribly. So uh, I'll chat about... Dan Froer's name later. I will not be chatting about Leonard Freeman's name at all. You can read it. You know what it says. I'm not going to be repeating it. Uh, inner hospitality, maybe. Except he's not that hospitable. Ten penny knocks it down. We've got a strike and a spare for Leonard Freeman. Yeah, you, you know, anybody that's in, currently in UBA can go on uh, ubaaverages.com and look up the plethora of names that Leonard has, uh, nicknames he has for his yes. jerseys. And uh, the one he's currently wearing today is not his worst one. So no, it is um, not. So yeah, there's, there's there's that. ones that are that are boy scout. That one's boy scout rated compared to some of the other ones that he has. But again, the children. Now, Daniel, if you wasn't here for the last Caffeine TV show that we had showcasing Daniel, Daniel's last name is Daniel Son, and he is a fan of the Karate Kid movies. That is why that name is there, like that. It's also Daniel Son because he is the son. He's, a couple of dads are also named Daniel. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out which one, which one of those karate kid related or one of the one of the, the Daniels and his family, like whoever stole his sleeves needs to return them immediately. Aha, uh -huh. yes. Wax on, wax off, wax sleeves. That's right. Wax non-sleeves. Far looking to double. If he does, he will take the first lead of this game. Or 
score right now. And it, actually, that would also be the first double of this match. If he can hit it, here's a shot. That ball looks good. It is. All right, so by the way, we're hearing already, if you can tell, we have messages from the peanut gallery. That actually came from his own teammate being called the sorry lefty. And you also had somebody already from the DMV bashing Leonard Freeman. And with friends like them for both of them, who needs enemies at this point? Right, and, and the thing is like, you know, so the, the, the gentleman that was hollering at Daniel about, you know, hey, what's taking you so long? It, it's in the best interest of the North to get this match over with quickly. Because we've seen it when we've had North-South matches before, that once the event ends and all the South bowlers come over and show their, throw their support around Leonard, whether you love him or hate him, they're still going to support the South. That is very true. And so that energy is something that Leonard will be able to free up, you know, to, to, to pull from. So yes. it's in Daniel's best interest to close this out as early as possible and, you know, and, and get out of, get away with a win. Because if it goes and, and the uh, event that's going on finishes first, then it's going to be a different a different contest regardless. Yeah, the, the later, I agree with you, the later it goes, the better environment Leonard Freeman's going to have. Freeman figuring out what not to do as a right-hander on lane, 30, on lane 56, which that was a little bit of a mess. 55, no problem, so he's got a double as well. But you're absolutely right, and yesterday as a, as a uh, proof of concept, the, shall we say, the Southeast Heavyweight Champion got absolutely flattened by Devin Bainbridge. Got it done in five, didn't have a chance for the crowd to come over here. Not only was it done in five, it was done in a very quick five. The match itself lasted maybe a little bit over an hour. And that is what Daniel probably wants to do, is keeping that same pace. Daniel still up by 10 pins, going into the fifth frame. Both bowlers are on strings. Yeah, it, it's very important. Like, I joked about it in the open that, you know, Daniel needs to, you know, Daniel needs to try to go for a sweep here. Daniel needs to get it over with early because he don't need to let Leonard hang around. You no, know, when, when Leonard, that'd be a mistake. Leonard's last, um, Leonard won the title from Kevin Decker, and Kevin Decker got up 2-0 on him, and then Leonard was able just to kind of stick with it, stick with it, and then Leonard walked away as the cruiserweight champ. So, um, this, how quickly this match goes, will will be really more telling than than it would be in most cases. Yeah, very true. Daniel looking to make it four in a row. He does not. He leaves a seven pin. By the way, I'd like to direct your attention to your right, which is one of his teammates showed up with. Came with a broom and a little bit of a dustpan thing. So they're thinking the exact same way that you are, which is we want the sweep. Get the sweep, use that, get the heck out of here. Now, obviously, Leonard would be more than happy to use that to his own visual effects as well. Yeah, I don't think that dustpan is big enough for... Um you know, for either one of them, no. but, but definitely no, not for either one of them. Just just even the symbolism in it. Um, you know, I always tell people the story that uh, where I fell in love with WCS and everything we do here uh, in Balder Broom, where uh, we had had a bowler that got swept, and uh, so a girl threw the broom on the approach, and uh, it was that Mega Bowl probably five six years ago. I remember you, that. You, you probably remember that, and. Um, and so that's where, like, it was a, uh, uh, it was a man. Some, some people took it, some people took it to the offensive. Yep. Some, some people, people got offended, and my, and unfortunately, my attitude is, uh, well, you lost. There's a room. Yeah. It was one of those things where uh, it was uh, Amanda Stone yes. beat uh, Christina Oakley. Correct. And um, Amanda Stone one and four. Yeah. Amanda one and four. So I want to say it was Crystal Butler. That yes. I remember correctly. Yes, you did. Um, threw that the broom out there. Um, Christina's teammate, uh, Emily Kyle, mm -hmm. took, uh, took offense to it, went and got the sweep, uh, went and got the broom. And so it was, but that's how how uh, how the, the trash talk goes to UBA and how things go. And like, that's what drew me into all this. Like, I, I like, in all that, like, I, I fell in love with like how Amanda carried herself, how, um, you know, the reaction that KO had when in losing, like it, it obviously, it hurt. Because uh, they had actually had a match before, they had a similar outcome, I believe. And so, and then seeing Emily stand up for her teammate, like it was just a lot of emotion and stuff. And like, that's what sucked me in. And when you have things like that happen, you, you pull people in, and it's, and it's fantastic. 
Yeah, right now Leonard Freeman trying to take the lead. He's not going to do that. He leaves a pair of corner pins, this time around a 10 pin. And, and it almost seems like he was better off trying to, ball, trying to throw the ball either on the peak or on the cross because he's got strikes that way. Now the times that he's putting the ball in the pocket, he's leaving corner pins. The only good thing for him is that he's making his spares. So right. he's not out of it. He's still only down no. by around nine pins at this point. Baffy, for all those that just tuned in, we are in the second half of game one. Nobody's won anything at this point. Daniel Four is currently up. He represents the Northeast. Your Southeast is represented by one Leonard Freeman. Yeah, and I think what's going to be a thing, especially early, because we'll, we'll have we'll have games like three, four, and five. We'll probably have a little bit more transition and things like that to deal with. But early, it's going to be who, if you make the mistake, if you you know you flag a ten pin, you um, you know leave a two eight ten or anything crazy like that happens, um, that's who's going to lose the game. You know, yes. so co covering all your spares, you know, you want more strikes than spares, obviously, but. You got to be able to be ready to pounce and capitalize on when somebody opens. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and the other thing that you said, you're absolutely right here. In the World Championship Series in this level, creating an open is just like a, a turnover in football. It could be a huge momentum cha changer. And if you're clean, you're often better off than not going to win those matches. And, and that was something else that, you know, we, we saw in the match we, uh, we, were, we were here for yesterday that the uh, North uh, champ, Devin, was, should have lost game two. And all uh, Jacob had to do was strike the first ball on the 10th, and he did. And uh, so that 1-1, one, one, it, it would have been after two, became 2-0, turned into 3-0, and Devin ended up winning in five. So, and, and what also helped Devin a lot is that Jacob, who's a Southeast champion, made a couple of opens in game three, and that allowed Devin to not only just jump, but jump, figure out the transition, and then again, make it a very easy five, five game win. Yeah, because a lot of times these WCS matches don't happen with all this noise, don't happen with the crowd. Some of them are, are you know, it, you know, sadly in the North sometimes even, it's, it's kind of an empty arena kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they're at one side of the, you know, one side of the center, the other side has action, but you know, they, they give you the freedom to, you know, you got your own pair down there, have at it. But this atmosphere is completely different. We got we got a welterweight North versus South match on our left. We've got an event on the other side of them. There's a lot of noise, a lot of traffic in here. So th no matter how good you are or you, how good you think you are, this is still a different environment for most folks. Oh, yeah, easy. You know, and as as we see, again, some of these action going on over here right now, and you're looking at this from the Cruiserweight standpoint, the lowest score so far, and I hope I'm not jinxing free, and of course I just did, the lowest score so far is a nine spare and no opens until Leonard Friedman wants to do that. Daniel, right now he's not caring, he's going to get his drink. What is in that drink, sir? What do we got here? It's definitely not mustard, it's not pickle juice. What is in that? What do we got over here? Liquid IV. Liquid IV. We got a hydration multiplier. Well, so far, so far no problems. Nice pairs and strikes. What it's done is that it's multiplied the number of pins that Leonard Freeman has left up there by three, which is not good for him. That is the first open of this match. And more importantly, it gives Daniel Ford a 25 pin lead as we go into the eighth frame. Now, Ray, if I'm Leonard Freeman right now, I just made the first open of this match. What is going through your mind if you're Leonard Freeman? So Le Leonard's already, knowing Leonard, he's already deciding, you know, basically not what he does here in the eighth, but it's going to be more on what Daniel does, you know. I because understand that. If, yeah. da if Daniel follows up his spare in the eighth with a strike, then, oh, you know, Leonard will probably go ahead and concede oh, this game and go ahead and figure out if there's any adjustments he needs to make. You know, I don't know if he threw a bad shot when he left that four, six, seven. Oh, oh he sure or, did. On, on yeah. the way over, I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Yeah. On the way over, just because you mentioned it, on the way over, he was walking and he's yelling at himself, bonehead move, bonehead move, bonehead move. Yeah. You're absolutely right. He made a mistake and he knew it. Yeah, so it's, you know, if he's still good with what he, where he's at on the lane and everything, then there's not really much he needs to really do. But, you know, what we've seen in the past, this, this game is not over yet. Oh, absolutely not. It's not a match. It's not a well, game. It's a well, marathon. Well, it might. Well, it might as well be now. Oh, not uh, necessarily. It's only 25 pins, and which means that he still needs a pair of marks. 
If he can double in the ninth, that will help him out greatly. If he opens in the ninth, if my math is correct, and it is, if he opens in the ninth and Freeman goes out the door, Freeman wins. So this game is definitely not over yet. A double here will really make it close to over, but open and the pendulum swings right back over to Leonard Freeman. Yeah, and I mean the worst the worst ball that Daniel's thrown so far was his nice first pair. ball the first frame. Yeah. You know, when he uh, left the seven. So all all Daniel's got to do here is not screw it up. I am pretty confident the way he's been throwing the ball. Like we'll see right here. He buries that. Big jump so, right there. Yeah, so you know so basically what it, what it winds down to in this is game one. Freeman's got to go out the door. Daniel's got to make a mistake. Freeman may have to spike and put some tequila in that liquid IV. May, maybe a little Henny. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know. So cognac. First things first, it's got to be a strike. Ooh, yeah. that is a strike. Is it a strike? I think the two pin could trip forward, and you, you, you don't really want to see that. Um, but he got them all down, so. You know, if he can if he can go if he can go sheet go 224, you know he will still make him show up in the tent. You know, because you know if he goes 224, and Daniel nine opens, and Daniel will go off for a 216. So absolutely, this game yeah. is not over yet if he goes out the door. Even if he hits the first one, that still means that 216 has got to have some good count to it. First ball's coming up, it's got to be a strike. It is. All right. So, so, so that strike alone means that Daniel has to sort of show up. Right. Like right now, even if he doesn't get the strike here, it does mean that Daniel can't go big six, he can't go golfing, he can't go praying to the Church of the Episcopalian. Right. Second shot here if he gets a strike. Second shot here if he gets a strike means that he needs a mark. All right, it doesn't matter whether or not there's a seven of his attachment or not. So eight pins from Daniel on his first ball is a win. Right. Now what Leonard Freeman is hoping for is he's now he's told me he's got the Freeman family over here. So he needs one family member to show up for each pin representing that he needs Daniel to leave. Freeman will finish with a 213. And so what Freeman needs right now is a gigantic mistake by Daniel. Yeah, and, it, and it's like we've talked about before. It's it's the best of seven. So Short-term memory would be great if they if he can forget all about this and, and go ahead and get ready for game two. Put it out of his mind. It does, total pinfall is completely irrelevant. He could lose the game by one pin or 100 pins. Correct. It's still a loss. Uh, just get ready for the next one is all Leonard's got to do. It's barring some crazy uh, disaster here by Daniel, which, you know, I'm pretty sure this is going to bury the pocket. And he, he buried, did. Yep, and he buried the pocket. So that's a win. Yeah. Win so there's one thing, like when when you watch bowlers at any level, you kind of can see where they they're, they're feeling it. You know, he's feeling really good. Um, you know, he'll probably punch this out, even though he doesn't really need to. He could try to do something else if he wanted to, but I, there's, his ball hasn't moved from where he's been throwing it. He doesn't transition, hasn't touched nothing he's doing yet. No. He just he just keep throwing it out. And, um, yeah, if I'm Daniel, I don't do a thing. If I'm Daniel, I don't do a thing. I go grab that IV water, and if I win, win in four or five, I don't have to worry about pickle juice or mustard or anything else. I'll be in really good shape, especially right. on the ride home. All right, absolutely. So we already know Daniel's got the game. The question is, is he going to keep striking? Yes, he is. That is five in a row. I'm sorry, four in a row for Farrar. And Ray, as you said, the worst that he has done is a nine spare. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in uh, the way Daniel's throwing the ball right now. And we've seen, we've, we've both been doing this for a while now, and we've seen where people have been able to play defense, so to yes. speak, and, me and mess up each other's lines and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, we got a righty and a left. So unless Leonard's going to learn to throw a backup ball all of a sudden with about a 200 grit on it, it's not going to matter. You He's going to have to bring out his friend, Yuri Fain. Well, I, and, and puts around with it on the left-hand side, and I'm not even sure at this point that's going to matter. And it's not going to matter if you can... Oh, no, well, the streak is over, but it doesn't really matter at this point. At the end of game one, Daniel Farrar, 248, Leonard Freeman, 213, Farrar, and his magic liquid is up one games to nothing. Yep. Yeah, and, and, and it's one of those things where, you know, Leonard's got to just forget... 
many is on. I know how many is I'm going to come over here and chat over here. I know how many is Oh, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't care where you, I don't know where you're from, I don't care. But all I know is that's hey. one. We'll see game two. I'll be right here. You're right. You only take four to beat me. I, I wasn't. Nobody has beat me yet. I, we'll see. Nobody has beat me yet. We'll see. You know we'll see. I don't care. We'll now, see. one of the things no, that we you did mention that, this, right, yeah. was that regardless yeah. of whether or not Leonard that's wins that's or Leonard that's loses, that's it's that's a guarantee that's that's that Leonard's going to go crazy. This would be part of what we are talking about right now. This would be classic Freeman. Right. So. No, don't, don't be sorry. Good to see you, too. I actually wanted to have a chat with you. So tell everybody over here what your name is and how you are connected with Mr. Farrar, besides the fact that you're on the same team. My name is Antoine Brown. Sir. They call me Boo. Hello, Boo. And I am president of Frank America. And I'm here to support my, my win. Okay? Just to let you know that. So all this noise he's talking you know. doesn't mean much to me I because I understand who that lefty is right there. So once I finish talking to you, I'm going to go finish talking to him. Yeah. He, he says he likes to lose game one in a lot of matches. And I'll also say, and Ray will verify it, he likes to yeah. lose game two in a lot of matches also. Well, yeah. That's what losers do. When they lose one and two and they got to fight back, he's been good at fighting back. That's good. But he hasn't got a, an opponent like this before. This lefty's consistent. He's handled pressures well. That he's proven. He has proven that when he won the title, of what he can do. Well, that one game went to Game Seven, if I remember correctly. It was Game Seven. He shouldn't have went that far. On an injury, he still won that match. So do I? Do I even think I'm worried about him right here? Absolutely not. Now is he still injured or is he okay? He's fine. Fine now. Proven by the 48 on the first one. Well, no crampies. Not at all. He should be all right. We make sure he's hydrated. He's taking his look with LV. Got some Gatorade. All that. We weren't sure if he was going to be able to finish the game, if I remember last time. And he still won. That's he still won. He still won. That's, that's how impressive sometimes he is. He's sorry his own or what, but I'll tell him that only when he's not bowling me. But everybody else, I think he can take it. All right. Well, I wish you the best of luck, sir. Good luck. I will let you root on your teammate, and you can get into a yelling match with Leonard right now. Talk to you later. I'm going to take what's secure. All right. Sounds good. All right. Sounds like a plan. Now, Andre over there, by the way, is, is commenting with Segura on the Vixens match, North versus South. And we may get some bonus footage of that, depending on how long this goes, because right now this is going pretty quickly. 1-0 Daniel. Daniel starting out of the game with a double. Freeman right now looking to match pace. If not, then him and, um, <laughs> him and his buddy over there are going to be having a nice little long discord. Freeman looking for two. He's got it. Yeah, Len Leonard's the type that you can, you can never count Leonard out. You know, Absolutely not. Um, you know, you can see how fired up he was. Um, we talked about it in the open when we were setting up these matches on where we were going to cover him and all, all that kind of stuff. Like, Leonard was the reason why this match needed to be streamed, this match needed to be covered because you don't know what he's going to do. He's he's very unpredictable. He'll he, He's not boring. You know, he's, he's going to be exciting the whole way. If, if you noticed, I let you sit closer to him than me. So if he's going to want to, if he's going to get to me, he's going to have to get through you first. Right, absolutely. There's a table blocking me from him. There is no such thing over there. Even though he could walk around the table and strangle me over here if he wanted to. Right now he doesn't. He's hey, focused. So, Leonard, so you, uh, game one didn't go your way, but you uh, came out this one firing so far. Um, how you feeling? Oh, I'm good. My man came and hyped me up. That's all I needed. Yeah, that's what I've been telling people. Like, yeah, you lose game one a lot. You've even lost yep. more game twos than you should. But you're always uh, you're resilient, and you, you never know how things are going to react to you. But you, you're doing well so far. So uh, keep up the good work, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, the other thing you mind the match doesn't end until you lose game four. You can even lose game three, no problem. There, your problems happen when you lose game four. However, speaking of threes, both bowlers three strikes in a row as we start game two. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point that uh, somebody doesn't go ahead and throw a 300 out here. These are both these are both both in the cruiserweight series that are very capable of uh, heavyweight scores, uh, very much so. I actually find that in the cruiserweight series period. I actually find when the cruiserweights are on, sometimes their scores are better than the heavyweights. Yeah, I mean I've, we've had plenty of matches in the South this year, so where um, the heavyweights have sometimes. Depending on all the, the different factors that there are, they're bowling like welterweights. You know, they're bowling yeah. like they've never shot a 200 in their life. Um, and then you get the cruiserweights welterweights sometimes that this is their environment. Oh, six pin. This is their environment, and like people just bowl heads up better. You know, they just bowl it different. It just I impacts think cruiserweight, everybody. you know what? One of the things I see, and I think you're absolutely right, cruiserweights 
like to be sloppy. They like to be messy. They like to go after people. Heavyweights sometimes, and I think that's part of the problem sometimes with what heavyweights have. They have this level of respect. I respect my opponent. I don't want to throw the mistake because I know my opponent will jump on it. But sometimes that also stops you from being aggressive and making the shots that you need to make. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's all about the, your individual focus. What what excites you? What gets you going? And, and like Leonard said, you know, the dude talking trash to him about losing game one, that's going to help Leonard here in game two. You know, so it's almost like sometimes Leonard, you just don't talk to Leonard. Like Sometimes the, you, you got to go. leave the sleeping dragon alone because if you don't, sleeping dragon may come over and dracarys you and then you get incinerated. Freeman right now having the first chance to take the lead in game two at this point, fourth frame. Strike will let him do exactly that, and there it is, Dracotis. Yeah. Or in this case, Bufudas. Yeah, he's he, he's fired up, man. Like he it, is. It's, it's kind of good to to see him, um, you know, having this energy. You know, I, I know he's really big one about wanting to represent the South. He knows in the South that you know that he, he's very over. You know, he's you either love him or you hate him. Nobody just kind of blob out. I, I believe the key word is polarizing. Polarizing. Polarizing is a very good word. Um, if we were talking about in wrestling terms, he's definitely over. Yes. Um, and one way or another, he's definitely over. He's trying to try to throw the ball over here, and he ooh, won't do it. Tempo. Temp yeah. So. Assuming that Freeman makes this, and no bowler yet has missed a makeable spare. I mean, there was an open, but that was a split. All the other pins that he's made are makeable spares. Assuming that he makes this one, we'll be tied. Nope. And he'll make it, and we're tied. And the thing with Leonard, where we see him like energized and amped up because he's bowling well, if he would have dumped that in the ditch or missed it left, like. I think we got a very loud Freeman if he put a it in the ditch. Very loud Freeman. We would have had to get the beat button ready. Like, he just, he just gets all. He, he puts his emotion, his emotion on his sleeve. Like he, By the he way, shout, shout out to the cameraman, Tony Nieves, who I'm sure does have a tweet button somewhere in his equipment. I'm sorry, Anthony Nieves. He does not like it when I call him Tony. Anthony Nieves is a camera guy, but I'm sure that he'll have a tweet button somewhere. And no tweet button's right for now for Daniel. Daniel will throw a strike. Now we're going into the second half of game one. Daniel kicked the first game. We are exactly tied at this point. And we will stay that way if Daniel throws a double in the six. If not, he's going to fall behind by 20. And we can see Daniel is a motive guy, throwing uh, his motive equipment. Also, uh, in front of his uh, jersey has his L1 apparel um, patch on there. So some of the, the shout outs that we will have coming from him if we get to talk to him uh, post game. Sure. Leonard is a brand of Brunswick guy, so we got, we got yeah, some uh, a little rivalry now in, in that sense as well. But none of them could touch Storm anyway. That coming from a Storm guy. Oh uh, well, I like Storm equipment also, and I also like the fact that Daniel threw a double on the board. So now, how does Free respond? Because that's another one of his nicknames, and that's the one that I'm going to use. Yeah. Because I'm certainly not going to use the one that's currently on his jersey. No. Nope. Yeah, he's just got to, uh, he's got to strike here because, okay. oh, nine pin. So, yeah, he that ball looked good to me. Yeah, it looked pretty good. He just got, it, it came with just a tad high, but he just got to make sure that he strikes, um, that he strikes kind of after this one going forward. When he, when he gets up on the left lane, he needs to strike to put pressure back on Daniel because right now Daniel's back in cruise control. Daniel's got the lead, and Freeman's running out of frames. <laughs> Granted, there's still four of them left, and he's not down by a lot. But he is now down, which means he's got to keep throwing strikes. Or start throwing them, because if Daniel keeps throwing strikes, he's going to do exactly what he said that he did last time around, which is lose the first two games. Yeah, and the, and the thing is, like, with Daniel, like, Daniel hasn't missed the pocket yet. You know, Daniel's in the pocket. Every, don't, the worst he's done is a nine count. So, yeah, that's the worst thing that he's done. Yeah, that's the worst thing he's done. So what Leonard's got to just hope that Daniel has more nine counts the rest of the way. One, so he can catch up, and then two, so he can pass him. Because, you know, right now, Leonard could go 268, but 
268 is going to be short yeah, by 11 pins. 279 is not yep. going to, you know, you can't catch that. You nope. Know? And sometimes it, it's 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 terrible. It's a terrible feeling when you shoot 260 and you lose. Sometimes 268 no good. Sometimes it's short. Daniel up right now, up on a double. Another strike here, and he's going to start to pull. Oh, I can't say pull away from this. So it is only an 11 pin game. But he can force Leonard Freeman to keep striking here if he does. And there's another one. Three in a row. Yep. People are saying behind it's over. No, it's not over yet. However, Daniel will carry an 11 pin lead into the eighth frame. And if he holds on to it, it will be over. Another strike here will put a lot of pressure on Leonard Freeman. Because under the best circumstances, if Freeman throws so strikes, he's still only down by 11. Now a non-strike over here, depending on how bad the magnitude is, will give, well, non-strike will definitely give Leonard some life. The question is, will he be able to take the lead? Right. Yeah, the, the, the minute Daniel doesn't strike, the door's open for Leonard. Absolutely. Unless it's the bill ball in the 10th, then by then it's too late. That too. Good shot here, looking for one row, gets it. He throws the ball like that, there's not gonna be a lot of opportunity for Leonard Freeman to come out. Speaking of which, there's Free. And as we said, the pressure right now is on. He needs to double to keep himself within 11 pins. So he's got to make an adjustment, and he needs to make an adjustment now. Over here, right-hand side, day 56, eight frame. Here we go. There's that ball. That ball's coming up. Ball looks good. It is, oh, wow. Oh. I was about to say it is, and no, it is not. There's that ninth pin again. That's the same pin that he left in the sixth frame. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, something hit it. it. It shook a little bit. So it was a little bit better than last time on that lane. But if it don't fall over, it's just as bad, so. Well, Matt, Matthew Lowther's UBA jersey name is, is get the nine out. And right now, Leonard Freeman would probably like to borrow that jersey at this moment. Yeah. Because that's a, he has failed to do that twice on lane 56. And now he needed a little help before. He's going to need a lot of help now as we go to the ninth frame. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all really just is, is, if Daniel just, I'm telling you, man, this could be going four. I mean, I hate for that to be the case. I know I joked about it in the open. Uh, just kind of picking that letter. Cross it over. No. Is that a five pin? Yeah. No, it's not no, a five it's pin. Another no, it's another nine pin. Another nine. Um, so it's, you, you still see the, the, the motion here. So yeah, Leonard needs to change his name to inner nine pin because right now that's what he's leaving out there. Yeah, it's it's a lot right now. Inner nine pin. All right, so you got Leonard trying to hype himself up right now because he's trying to scream uh, at that poor defenseless nine pin. Yeah, that nine pin should be suing for emotional battery right now. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> I hear you on that one. But. You got to think, is, is there going to be a time where Daniel's a little slow, goes through the nose, gets a little fast, hits it light, and leaves the split, and leaves it because uh, open instantly leaves it, puts it right back in, in Leonard's favor. Well, that that's the only thing that will help Leonard right now. And it's even at that point because he only has a spare in the ninth frame. Strike, I think if he strikes one more time here, he doesn't need much to finish off Leonard. If he throws it, there it is. Five in a row for Daniel Ferrar as we go to the 10th frame. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's already 219 plus everything, got it in the 10th, so. Um, 219 plus, and the yeah. best that Leonard Freeman can do is a 237. Yeah. So if you look at that mathematically, that means seven pins is a winner. Yeah, as long as he don't double gutter. Well, that if he doubles gutters, that definitely would not be seven pins, sir. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be a, uh, Daniel's going to take a 2-0 lead in the game three. And hopefully Leonard is somewhere getting himself, you know, amped Focused. up. Or we're going to, we're going to see the North uh, win another match. Yeah, that's fair. That, that is a new number, seven in a row for Daniel. And now Leonard Freeman wants to win this matchup and, and some money that goes along with it. He needs to do what he did against Kevin Decker, which is win a bunch. Doesn't have to be the next four. 
You know, it almost certainly needs to be one out of the next two. Well, it definitely needs to be one out of the next two. Yeah, but winning four out of five is, is um, a lot harder than four out of seven. True. But four out of five's been before. done, and he's done it before. Yeah, he's definitely done it before, and, um, you know, it, it's really, it's probably discouraging for him, too, that, like, Daniel's really buried this pocket every time, you know? His worst, worst count has been a nine, and that's and that's pretty good. Go, you got two games in, and all you got are X's and nines, and that's fantastic. Yeah, your your low counts, low counts and nine spare, you're doing pretty good. And he'll add a two seventy something other to his docket. Meanwhile, Leonard Freeman can blame the nines because if he didn't leave those two, three nine pins, we could have had an even matchup here. Yeah, but we do not, and because we do not. Daniel Forrest's got to go to zip. Yeah, and Leonard, and Leonard improved on his first game. So he's got to, like, continue to build on that and just hope at some point, just hope at some point, Daniel drops the ball and leaves the door open. Well, but it's not looking good right now. That's what, you, that's what he needs to do right now. Daniel Ferrara, eight in a row to finish off game two. And, and we were talking before about the fan clubs, and everybody's worried about Leonard Freeman's fan club showing up. Daniel Farrar's club has already shown up. And if Leonard Freeman needs to win a game, he needs to hit a head pin. I mean, obviously now he's making adjustments for game three. That would be not the correct adjustment. This would be if he had his buddy Yuri Thayne, he could start punching on the left side with it. Because that may be right now the only thing that is stopping Daniel at this moment. And I have no idea what that was. At the end of game two, 279 for Daniel Farrar. Leonard Freeman, 213. The North is up to zip. Now, Daniel is starting the third game. Meanwhile, Daniel's doing that. Let me chat with Free. Now, you said that your family's going to be here. Has your family shown up yet? They all here. Uh, what, what is your opinion right now of, of what you've been doing so far the first two games? Well, first game was a little sloppy, but then second game was like, I got to a good start outside of the 10 pin, but when I went blower nine twice on 56, that kind of like something I didn't need. Cause I was trying to make sure I could maintain the pace and go, even if I went uh, 68, you know, it still had to force him to strike out. So I'm, I'm basically giving games to him now, especially what I'm doing. Can't do that no more. Well, you're, you're running out of games to give him. All right, good luck. Yeah, Leonard doesn't need to make this a max line in the situation. He does not. So Daniel starts game three, I believe. Yeah, so like the event I was talking about earlier, it's a it's a three game event. It's five man teams bowling. It's a, a you know franchise uncapped event. Mm -hmm. But they're only in the second frame of game two. So if Leonard don't drag this out, he's not going to have uh, uh, the flood of support that I referenced earlier when uh, Niffin. Uh, came back uh, a few years ago. We bowled here uh, right, right before COVID and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, in, in order for Leonard to get any so, sort of support, this game's got to go to Game Six. Yeah. This match has got to go to Game Six because, as you said, Game Two's over. They just started the second game over there. So Daniel Farrar right now starting up. There's another one, nine in a row for Farrar. And if you're Leonard Freeman, you need to slow something down. You need to do something. Maybe say bad things about his mom or maybe attack him with one of the uh, facilities over here with the sweeping equipment. Because right now, that sweeping equipment is still in play at this point. Because I still have the nice little broom over here. Yeah. You know, the thing is, like, there's a couple people here watching, you know, on Leonard's behalf right now. But there, there's no, no energy coming from any of them. There's no, uh, like, vocal support, I guess. Well, there is energy. It's just coming out of the 8-pin, the 9-pin, and the 10-pin, all the pins that Leonard Freeman's been leaving up there. And Leonard's just, you can tell the look on his face of frustration right now that he has. Leonard will make the spare. Well, because Leonard's, Leonard's um, you know, we've talked uh, after some of his cruiserweight matches he's had to where, you know, when he made a ball change, it messed up somebody else's line, and, you know, it, he was good from there. The problem is... You know, we got righty versus lefty. So there's nothing he can do to mess up, you know, his opponent's on. But as so I he, said, he could have thrown your in the ninth, tenth when he knew that he was not going to win. He yeah. could have yucked up that line with something. Obviously, he's not going to do it now at the beginning of game three. There's a strike. And the other thing that Leonard needs, somewhere down the line, 
Leonard needs to be able to emotionally capitalize on something. The problem is that Daniel Farr has given him absolutely nothing to capitalize with. Again, low count so far, nine spare. If your low count is a nine spare, that means you haven't thrown it open. It means that more often than not, your balls are strikes. And in this case, you're on a string. And you're on a string means he's on nine in a row right now. Yeah. He could have a dual game 300. Right. So right now, the only person that can stop Daniel Farrar at this moment is Daniel Farrar. Yeah. Going for 10 in a row here. Got it. Yeah. 10 in a row. Yeah. But Daniel Farrar has been going to the third frame of game three. And, and if you're Leonard Freeman, what are you going to do about that? You can't do anything about how you play defense against nine in a row, ten in a row. Well, I think Leonard saw that one the same way I did, where that was probably the worst ball he's thrown. It came in really light. Um, so, you know, all Leonard can hope is that, like, Daniel doesn't move and, 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 doesn't and make eventually, the and it, you know, doesn't stay ahead of the move. Daniel's obviously hoping that he does. But it's, it's going to take, Daniel's going to have to open the door for Leonard. Leonard can't yeah. kick the door open. No. Can't kick the door open if the, if the other person's own strikes. For up here looking for 11 in a row. Oh, he got it. And again, that ball, he is locked. Yeah, that, He's that, that was a lot lanes. better than he threw on the right lane. I sure did. 11 in a row for Daniel Farrar. But even on, Harry he, Kenner and others are screaming in the background. Uh, how's, how's your drink doing? You need a refill? Yeah, I'm going to need a refill. Okay, you may need a refill soon. Because whatever he's putting in there, it's working now. 11 in a row for Farrar. And right now, Free desperately needs to get it to two in a row as we go into the third frame of game three. Well, that's ugly, but it's good. Free only down by 10 as we go into the fourth frame. Yeah. For all those that are tuning in right now, if you've been looking for the Leonard Freeman show, with the exception of him yelling at a nine pin, you haven't seen much. Right now, it's been all Daniel Farrar yeah. as we go into game three. And for again, with a 10 pin lead over here, Free needs to do something. Well, right now, he's just got to keep striking. Well, and, that's a good something. And then, you know, um, pray to whoever he prays to that uh, Daniel screws up because um, Daniel is draining it. Sure is. Looking for three. You go. Got right. it. So, Freeman yeah. with three. So he's trying and to get a little, little going, you know. Trying to get something going. Whatever mind games that Freeman has, he needs to start pulling them out. Because right now, 12 in a row potential from Daniel Farrar. We'll be chatting so, with him later on. So, Tremaine, uh, we know you're watching the Vixens match as well. Um, what are you thinking about uh, Leonard and Daniel here? What's the count right now? It's 2-0 uh, it's, it's, North. It's North is winning both and losing, uh, uh, South is losing everything. Except for the Vixens match. Well, yeah, but I'm saying Leonard's down 2-0. What happened in Leonard's last match? <laughs> and, and we, we referenced that. He got he was down two to the Decker and uh, came right back now. and won it. Got it. And that that watch, does not watch help. Watch Leonard walk him down. I'm calling him right now. All right, uh, all right. Walking him down. Well, Leonard's walking down. He's got a very long pass to take right now. Twelve in a row. Yeah. For Daniel Farrar. Yeah. So that was uh, that was Tremaine from NWO. By the way, you didn't introduce him. Would you like to introduce the person that you just interviewed? Yeah. That was uh, that was Tremaine Vi. He's uh. uh We're gonna be NW seeing him later on tonight, correct? No, he, he's carrying the Vixens belt around. Uh -huh. uh, his, his teammate is bowling uh, two pairs to our left uh, against against uh, Hermie, Hermie from Hannibal. the north. So, you know, but Tremaine's loyal to the south. He's going for the south guy, and that's why he said he's calling it. Leonard's going to walk him down. But right now, Daniel is uh, out of GPS range. And right now, hey, locked in. Let's go. 13 in a row for Daniel Farrar at this point. Yeah, and again, there's not much you can do when your opponent's done 13 in a row. There's a lot of noise, but the noise is not coming from the south. It's coming from the north. Free himself looking for four in a row as we go to the yeah, four in a row for Leonard Freeman. 
going to the halfway mark of game three. And there's a lot of strikes going on. There's nine of them. Five of them belong to Daniel Farrar. That right now is the difference of this game. He's up by 10. Freeman needs some sort of support. He's sort of getting it right now. Well, he's hoping he's not out there by himself. He ain't by himself. He got me back here. I'm back here. Can he take care of the nine pins? That's the question. Yeah. I like, I like Tremaine shooting the nine pin. I don't like Tremaine shooting tens, though. Well, Free's looking for five in a row. That's a little bit light in seven pin. He's saying it's all right, but if you look at what his opponent's doing right now, the fact he's got 14 or 13 in a row, no, it's not all right. Yeah, it, it feels bad. Like, I, 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 I'm starting to feel bad for Leonard because he's not throwing the ball bad. He's not. But Daniel's worst shot is better than most shots people throw. So. Well, Kareem is doing what he can do. Yeah. What Kareem really needs to do at this point is get an elephant gun and go targeting after Daniel at this moment. And I'm not even sure that's going to help at this point. Daniel is as locked in, in as humanly possible. Right now, already in 13 in a row. Looking for 14 in a row, and more importantly, if he hits it, he'll be up by more than 20 on Leonard Freeman. That ball looks good. It is. Oh, does not. Uh -oh. Seven pins up there. Uh -oh. That ball will be right there. Le Leonard Freeman needed that, and needed that in the worst way. So 14 in a row is gone. The seven pin buddy, and this is the first time he's had to shoot at one today, is up there. Yeah. And this is the last match that he's at with him. He struggled on making the corner pin. And if he struggles again, Leonard Freeman, despite all the strikes, if he misses this, Leonard Freeman takes a lead. Yeah, an open here would be uh, fantastic for Leonard. You hear Tremaine from NWO. He's basically Randy McWilliams' uh, adopted son, so to speak. And he make the know, seven pin, no problem. Yeah, he, Tr Tremaine, Tremaine brings the noise for whoever he celebrates. He's definitely bringing the noise, and he's saying it ain't over. Of course, it's not over. It's only a 10 pin game right now. Yeah. Definitely not over. Yeah. Kareem said he was he was down 3-0 in his last match. No, he wasn't. He was down 2-0 in his last match. He yeah, does not want to be down 3-0 now. Right. Yeah, the match with uh, the match with Decker was for 250. This one is uh, a lot worth a lot more. Yeah. Yes, it is Daniel right now. Now what Leonard is hoping for is that he gets another diagonal slash to go along with that first one. As far right now, looking to start a new string, and he will. One row. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's still burying the left. Um, you know, if you, if you go back two frames on the right, you know, that's where he, he didn't throw his best shot. And then, then, then he went and left the seven, so. So right now we're looking at it. If if both bowlers go out, it is Daniel 279, Leonard Freeman 269. Speaking of which, Freeman's up. And now the one thing here that's a little bit different than the other two. At this point, the first two games he was striking, looking to just keep up and get within range. In this case, he wants to throw a double and forcing Daniel to keep the lead by throwing strikes. Yeah, I mean, all he's got to do. Yeah, all he's got to do We're here is... Right is now. Um, oh, yeah, the, it looks like the nine pin's laying down, which Leonard would be fine with the nine pin laying down. That's the pin he's looking uh, he, he Yeah, I was going to say, that's the one pin that he has an issue with. with. No. He would not have a problem if that nine pin was laid down for him. Yeah, it's a, like my, my pin of choice not being in the rack would be the five pin. Um, uh -huh. There's many powdering videos of me out there available for view. You? And, oh yeah. You miss a five pin. Constantly. And it, you be a play. The, the event almost stopped yesterday when I left the five pin because uh -oh. uh, I'm about 50-50 on the damn things. I used to be terrible at five pins until I joined the UBA and then I was told you miss a five pin to get powdered. Then my five pin make ratio went up tremendously. Freeman right now looking to double, put a lot of pressure on Daniel if he can. Because the double here will force 
Daniel, a strike here, there if you go, will, Kareem. and there right. it is. Yeah. So he, he's hyping you himself You can hear up. Kareem in the ba background. That was a big shot from Leonard Freeman. Yeah. Big for a couple of pieces. Number yeah. one, Kareem's finally doing something. He's getting somebody else besides him to be cheerleader. Number two, and more importantly, if Daniel is not going to strike you in the eighth frame, Freeman will take the lead going to the last two frames. So this shot here is for Daniel to maintain his tension lead. Yeah, and his worst two shots have come on this lane, so um, we'll see. We'll see. Last time out, he left the seventh pin. Yeah. We'll see. I think Leonard. I think Leonard can see the door. It's just a matter of Daniel's going to open it for him or not. Yep. Well, and now the question is, is Daniel going to let him open it? And yes, he is. Yeah. Door is open. Door is open. That, that is a three pin up there. Yeah. And now it does not matter what Daniel does. Leonard Freeman can go off the door and take this game and close the gap. But, but the thing I like about Daniel so far is we're, we're almost through three games and he's got at least nine every time. Yeah. And there's too Still many hasn't matches. Still had anything less than a nine. Yeah, we've had too many matches at every le level of the series where we've already would have had a six. Right. A eight. Right. Something like that. Yep. But for Daniel just to be, you know, nine or strike, that's fantastic for first ball. Yeah, well you also look at lane 56 right now. That that adjustment that he did obviously was not the correct adjustment. No, Daniel he, he got it, he got it out too wide. So I'm I'm not sure if he if he moved his uh what he was aiming for down lane or he might have moved right uh, thinking that was the right adjustment, but um, it was very late getting back. For sure. Now the other problem that Daniel has is that he's going to finish on lane 56, which is the lane that his strikes have vanished on. So, so now it's sort of a reverse. He needs to throw a strike here to put any sort of pressure on Leonard Freeman. Daniel can still go out for a 259, but that will be short against Leonard Freeman if Freeman goes off the door. So. Big shot here for Daniel in the ninth frame. A strike is almost mandatory at this point, and he'll get one. Yeah, he's big shot. He he he's throwing great on this left lane. Yes, he is. Well, he's throwing it. He was throwing it great on the right lane until the sixth frame in the eighth frame. Yeah, when Leonard when Leonard just walked by me, he said he's gonna go ahead and shut him out. So let's see if he can do it. So now here we go again. Now if Leonard gets the strike, he maintains the lead. Right. If Leonard does not get the strike, Daniel takes the lead back. Back and forth we go. Yeah, if Leonard gets in where he can shut him out, I would. If I was the people in the next like four or five lanes to our left, they probably should just wait and not bolt. <laughs> well, first he needs a strike. He'll get one. Yeah. See, so that so that that brought him over across the left lane. So and, right now, uh, Leonard Freeman up by ten. He will need to double in order to lock Daniel out. Anything yep. less than a double, Daniel can take game three. Yep. And I'll also say this, Ray. If if Free somehow loses game three at this point, first of all, he's going to go crazy. And second of all, this match may be open because the way that Daniel's throwing that ball, I don't see him losing four games in a row. First shot here. That's Barry. Yeah, and the thing is, like, I don't see, I don't. if Leonard somehow chokes here and loses game three, he's not losing, he's not going to win game four. It, no. it, it's it's going to be the bowling equivalent of being heartbroken. Where he's not going to be gonna able be what to. what we saw yesterday in game three with Jacob, where he right. should have had game two, and game three was a mess. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no. He's going to get them all. He's sweating on him. He got vomit on his sweat already. Ball spaghetti. This is for game three. No, oh. sir. Tip it. Oh, oh, oh. 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 So. Somebody threw up. He still got a ball. He's still got a ball, though. It's already over. He's still got a ball. You can count. I count it. You so can count. So, it's it's got one, two, three. Uh, well, the strike is important. I'm sorry, one, the spare is important one, two, three, here three, because it's going to depend on what Daniel's going to need to do. Though. Regardless, yeah. Daniel will need a double. Yeah. If Free decides to make the spare, he will. So, Daniel needs them all. All three strikes that he's up three, zero. Anything that is not three strikes, and it's either a tie situation or a letter finally gets on the board. I call it split. Who got some darts back here? Kareem looks like he wants to throw some darts. He wants to go to the pub and do some dart throwing. Yeah, his darts are first. <laughs> <laughs> 
First shot here from Daniels, gotta have it. He does, that's one. Kareem's start attempt did not work, and that's one. Daniel still's got a lot of work to do. Next two balls have gotta be strikes. The next ball must be a strike or the game's over. But he definitely, he made the adjustment. He may have added some speed and he, he threw did. the ball in a little yeah. bit. That, that, that's one of the better balls he's thrown on that right lane. Yes, sir. But he needs this one for us to even worry about the fill ball. That is correct. He's got, got to have this one or Freeman takes a game. Second shot here. That ball looks good too. And it is. Come on. Let's go. Now, Daniel's got a little bit, a little bit of wiggle room. Not a lot, a little bit. Strike the game's over. If he throws a nine, he ties two game roll off. Anything less than that, Freeman still wins. Yep. Freeman is pacing in the back at this point. Yeah. Because well, that, that leftover 10 pin could be a killer. Kareem has now gone running all the way to the Vixen side. Yeah, Leonard, he's frustrated with himself. He could have closed it out and he, and he failed. And like, he's gonna feel it, you know. He, he's gonna be mad, more mad at himself than anybody else. And if Daniel throws a strike here, he's gonna feel more than mad at this point. Cause now that broom and dust pap will really come to play. This is for game three for Daniel Son. Got it. Let's go. Need it. Got it, Kareem's hiding himself. Here comes Daniel's family coming up, and I don't know where Freeman is. Freeman and Kai's over there, and meanwhile, eventually, when the camera turns around on the other side, Kai has bounced all the way over six lanes. I wanna see the camera pivot back over if the camera guy can. Yeah. But Kai's nowhere to be seen. At the end of game three, Daniel Fora 259, Leonard Freeman 258. Not only is Leonard Freeman not winning this match at this point, Leonard Freeman is in danger of having to deal with the broom and the mop. Daniel, do you need a refill? Do you need a refill? I'm gonna refill my cup. He, he's parched right now. Yeah. He needs some more. And, and I don't think Leonard Freeman getting swept by Daniel Ferrar was on anybody's bingo card today. No. But that is what can happen. Freeman's gonna start this game with a strike, but wow. Yeah. So, you know, I, I used this phrase yesterday, I, I'm gonna use it again. And Daniel wins this one at the same pace that he's been winning the other ones. Not only will Freeman's group not have a chance to get back over here, but maybe it's time to look up another escape room. Yeah, it, that case might, of the Wizards Apprentice. Yeah, this this might be uh, uh, be another quick match, and I'm not go, I'm not gonna give up on Free. Um, you know, he's been in the same district as me for since my time in the UVA, and he's very polarizing. Um, and I'll say this, it's not over till it's over. Of course. You know, he's gonna he's still gonna need Daniel to help him. Right you now, Jeff, five in a row, back on that string, five yeah. in a row for Daniel Farrar going in the frame two. Yeah, so it's uh, it, it's not over yet for free. Free's, free's gonna hope for a max line in situation. And uh, but you know, Daniel's gonna try to just be over and done with and so you can go watch the next karate kid. Well, you know what? I, I don't know if the next variety can. Let's see if it's Cobra Kai, and maybe that's somebody coming out. He can watch that. Yeah, Cobra Kai would be an option for him for sure. Cobra Kai and chill. Yeah, he can still go figure out who, who's got his sleeves. Who's, where's Mr. Miyagi go? Six in a row for Daniel yeah, Ford. He's... I know where his shots have been going. That is six in a row for Daniel. Yeah. I don't know. We can ask him right now. Daniel, have you seen all of Cobra Kai yet? Because I know you're the Karate Kid fan. Have you seen Cobra Kai yet? Yeah, I've seen it once. Okay. Now, wait, wait, you just made the Night Night gesture over there. Is it, is it Night Night now? No, that's not Night Night. That's just the thing me and my uh, president do from the Daniel Sun thing. Bow. 
As there for the Sensei. Right now, game four looking a lot like game three. Both bowlers starting out on strikes. Both bowlers with a double. Here comes Freeman. And you got to think in his mind, he cannot make any more mistakes. If he leaves something up there, that anything up there, he may be thinking in his mind, uh-oh, I am screwed. Yeah, the way Daniels went throwing the ball, Leonard probably knows he needs to throw a 300. That, and it, he and may it, have to. And it's, it's one of the things where it, it's tough to think that after just a double, but Leonard can't really afford to miss. He cannot. And, and now, oh! And I was about to say, I'm right on cue. There's the tenpin. No, tenpin goes down. Hey, Freeman, you better get your ass busted, motherfucker. Right, right now, Mr. Freeman is getting his ass busted. Oh my goodness. You're gonna make the South look bad like this, motherfucker. Uh, right, right, right now, the South is not looking very good at this moment. No, we are, we are winless. Uh, the South is winless so far this weekend in these north versus south matches and uh it's not this going is not to helping your cause no nah, not a bit Daniel that, right now looking looking to even this up oh that ball scored it out there I, okay. oh i thought he was oh. going to get away with it he did not seven pin yeah. up there now now freeman there is four games left in this match leonard freeman's got to win all of them the margin error for him is zero aka el cheapo and while he did win four in a row against Kevin Decker, he was only down 0-2. So he had a shot of losing a game if he wanted to. This one, he cannot lose any more games. He's got to win the next four. Yeah, but... Yeah, but right now, the main thing is he just got to make sure that he wins game one, or get, wins game four here. He don't need to worry about the rest of them. All right, big spare, big spare there for Daniel. Daniel is still not open here through uh, three frames in uh, in three games, so it's very uh, it's very nice so far. Um, this is my first time watching Daniel ball in person, and I've been really impressed. Dude is uh, crushing the pocket. You know, all nine are better and. You, know, you can't help but want that in a teammate. You want that on um, anybody going to an event with you. He's, he's he's doing pretty good. You know, left, lefties are usually good at most places, but this dude is uh, is pretty phenomenal in the way he's been throwing the ball here at Valero Mechanicsville in uh, here in Virginia. He has not missed it on this left lane since, uh, I believe, game one, honestly. I think all of his misses have been on the right. So let's, uh, Leonard's, you know, Leonard's the one controlling this game. But it got to go one frame at a time. All right, here's free for a hand bone. Oh no, really, really light. Left the 2 8. Ah. Got it, covered it. Got this there. So now your max is 279 for Daniel, 278. For Leonard, so not where Leonard needs to be, but hopefully he'll get it. Uh, he'll, you got to keep striking and just hope you're, that you realize that is, that is the first eight count the whole entire match from either bowler. That's crazy when you think about that, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, because uh, you know Leonard just had to split early, um, and then in gar you know garbage time, you know when the game's over, he can't really look at those, but. Yeah, that was the first like 2 8 that he's left. And he covered it, but he needs to cover this 10 and just hope that Daniel is going to open the door for him again. He does. By the way, no makeable errors by either bowler so far, three games. They've been as clean as they possibly could be. It, it's been impressive. I, you know, I was just saying, like, how, like, you know, lefties are always looked at, you know, the shot's always easy for them. They don't have traffic. Da, da, da. Daniel's been very impressive. There are plenty of people that are going to watch this 
and when unholies happen and like all these different events um inside or outside of the uba you're gonna want this guy bowling with you oh yeah because he's he's very consistent his bad shots have been pretty good you know I mean, so and, not, and, and not let's talk about Leonard freeman what if freeman is down 3-0 if it's almost against any other bowler he's either up 2-1 or 3-0 at this point i mean freeman's been going great uh wrap seven and, and and freeman needed that because if daniel started going daniel started striking out now i don't know how freeman's going to be able to recover in this case freeman's got a little bit of a lead still he's going to maintain it seven pin up there but if you're Leonard Freeman, now it looks like there's a little bit of a transition going on on the left-hand side. You are Leonard Freeman, and you're seeing this. What are you going to do? How are you going to fix this? I, I honestly think he needs to throw it harder and take and try to slow. Don't worry about the ball motion as much. Um, if he throws it harder, it does. It won't impact the transition as much. Or the transition won't impact the shot as much. Uh-oh. Oh, so we got was, the spare. That was the closest he'd been to having an open right there. Yeah. He threw it with enough speed. If he didn't throw it with that much speed, that ball scored right into the left-hand channel. Daniel right now coming up. Second half of game four. Leonard Freeman has to win this game or the match is over. And right now he is up, but he's only up by eight pins. Both bowlers on spares. Yep. Yeah, the beautiful thing about bowling and, and how it's scored, they both got two spares, but the fact that Leonard's were back to back is actually a plus yeah, in this the, situation. The, the change in advantage, you're absolutely right on that. Daniel with the strike, Leonard Freeman is up, and Freeman needs to start stringing because if Daniel figures out lane 56, and Leonard Freeman does not get back on the strike train. His train's gonna go off the cliff. In a mass of twisted metal. Freeman right now, six frame coming up. That ball looks good. Got the improvement on it, yeah, he does. Buried that one. Great Absolutely shot there did. by Leonard. Yeah, that was, that was fantastic. Yeah, that, that was a well-improved, well-adjusted shot right there. And he needed it going to seventh frame. Yes. Again, I seriously feel this shot by Freeman's got to be a strike because I've got that feeling Daniel's going to throw one in the seventh and he's going to start stringing. You're, you're talking about the opportunities. This is Leonard Freeman's best and maybe final opportunity at right. this point. And if you're going for Leonard, you're hoping he don't leave a 10 pin. Absolutely not. Ooh. And he absolutely did. No. That was a bit of a sloppy mess, but I think he'll take it right now. I don't think he's very proud. Yeah. Nor do I think he needs to be at this point. Yeah. Who likes bonus bowling? I like bonus bowling. Daniel right now, big shot for this game and maybe the match in the seventh frame right now. If he can throw a strike, if he cannot throw a strike, Freeman's gonna start getting a lead on him. Here's that ball. He's cut it out short, there it is. See, that looked good. Eight pin game going to the eighth frame, both bowlers on doubles, Ray call it. I think this is gonna be the first time that Daniel throws a bad shot on the left. So you think Free's gonna escape this one? Uh, I need him to. I, I, I need him to. to, to <laughs> I, I don't want to see the guy get swept. I can't. I don't want to hear handle the phone calls of uh, him crying and being upset. Wait, we we have your buddy over here. He's coming over. His his last attempt at a dart did not work out too well. Here's his latest attempt at a dart. Daniel right now with three in a row. And again, looking to force, force Freeman here to strike. There it is. He has not oh, had an issue boy. with 55. The issue's been 56. Yeah. Except he just threw a strike there. And keep in mind, he does not have to finish on 56. He can finish on the lane that he has been sharp on all day. 
Gauntlet to Freeman. In order for Freeman to maintain his lead and to not get locked out in the 10th frame, next few shots that he's got to throw have got to be strikes. Eight frame coming out. Oh, he eked that one outside. And he's got to get away with it. That was not down and in. That was out and yipes. But that looks good over there. Three in a row for Freeman as we go to the ninth frame. Yeah, that bottom, the score on the bottom left corner of the screen, um, a, a, a strike is a strike. Strike don't, is a strike. Don't, don't watch how it falls. Ninth One. frame here, big frame for Freeman. If he strikes out here, he cannot get locked out. Yep. Here's a shot. That ball looks a lot better, and it is. Yeah. Big shot for Freeman. That ball looks a lot better than what he threw at 56. By yeah. the way, he's got to stay there, but the other thing that that does is that that forces Daniel to show up, and if he doesn't, Leonard Freeman's going to get game number one for yeah. him anyway on yeah. the board. Game one for him. Yeah, because what, what Leonard has to look forward to after this weekend is he's bowling against a teammate, J.R. Krupp, for the uh, for the cruiser, for the Southeast Cruiserweight title in, in April. So, um, you know, I know Leonard had talked previously about he wanted to, like, have this match and then he was looking forward to you know teammate versus teammate thing but i'm sure by now leonard's forgotten all about what's going on in april and he needs to make sure he needs to make sure he gets through this because he will be harassed uh constantly if if he lets the north beat him basically right now he is up by eight going into 10th frame daniel whatever daniel does as long as Freeman matches it, he's good, and he doesn't even have to match it. He can do eight pins worse. But if Daniel throws the first strike, free has got to go throw the first. If Daniel doubles, Free needs to double. If Daniel does not, depending on what he does, Free may not even need to mark. He may just need count. And I'm pretty sure that Daniel has not opened on the left lane since game one. I mean, not open, but not struck on, on every, the left every lane since game one. Every shot's been a strike. Yeah, and you're absolutely right on that. All of his non-strikes have been on lane 56. Leonard, however, would love to see that end right now. And it will not. Five pin goes down. That's a big when, shot. When the when the five falls forward, you know you don't deserve that strike. He absolutely did not deserve it, but he's... Uh, but he, he got it. That's all that matters, he, too. I'll tell you right now, he won't say no. Oh, no, never. Second, second shot over here. Again, Daniel can go out for a 259. Freeman can go out for a 267. If that's what happens, we're getting a game five. There's still a couple of shots away from that happening. Daniel right now looking to extend it to six strikes in a row for him. Here's a shot. That ball looks good. No, seven pin. And that is the one point where probably he would love to have seen that streak continue because now Freeman only needs the first strike. Yeah. However, he needs the first strike. Right. Spare's no good. Yeah. Yeah. The first strike is, is uh, getting that is a lot easier than getting the first two. So hopefully he'll get this first one. Well, he doesn't and, need the uh, first two. He only needs one. No, but if he would have struck, if Daniel would have struck, he would have needed the first two. Yes, sir. So Daniel made it a little bit easier for him. Fight. But we'll see how we go. Makes the spare, he'll finish with 248. Yep. So, this is real simple. Freeman strikes, we have a game five. If Freeman does anything except strike, the game is over, the match is over. Daniel Favar has done the impossible and has swept Leonard Freeman. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Leonard. This is to force a game five. That ball's got to hurry. It does oh, not, and it is game, in. set, match. Daniel Ferrar has swept Leonard Freeman out of the building. 4-0. Meanwhile, the yeah. room's over here if anybody <laughs> wants it. Oh, man. So and here it, it goes. Is, uh, we, got, we got some you sleeping going there on it is. down here. Yeah. And, and we're getting yeah. a hat chair here to go along with the room. Uh, yeah. You also got that also if you want to use the uh, dish pan. Yeah. Not man there, that goes. 
Wow. So, unfortunately for the South, Leonard um, had a couple couple games he. Wow. Yeah, I don't even know how to describe how Leonard did As, as just I did said, that. I like, do not have Leonard Freeman being swept on my bingo card. No, I, I didn't either. Um, I know I joked about it in the open, but um, I wow. really didn't expect anything anything worse than that there. I did, um, I did not. Yeah, you go talk to Dan. And uh, I'll, uh, you can speak to him. I'll bring the necessary accoutrements. Okay, I got you. Hey, so Daniel, Daniel, congratulations. Um, you did it four, man. You didn't even get your prediction right, man. Tell me about that. Once I got locked in, I knew it was going to be, he was going to have to bowl a lot to beat me. Once I got locked in, I knew he was going to have to bowl a lot to beat me because I, um, I realized what I had. I got locked in. I found my target, and I just kept hitting it repeatedly. And I knew he was going, he was going to have to throw the shots. Yeah. You, you either had a strike or nine count in the first ball every frame of all four games. That's phenomenal in itself. And you owned the left lane until the very end there. Uh, that was like the first time since game one where you didn't strike. Um, man, like, what, what else you got to say, man? Like, I, I, like you, I know the North's proud of you. Your teammates are proud of you. You had the guys with the broom out here already. Um, just what other words you got for us, man? One thing, motive. You got to go out there and get you a motor ball. We do nothing but win, quality over quantity. Also, North, we here. DMV, we here. And L1, you want good product, you want good quality apparel, make sure you go see L1. Get custom jerseys and everything. Also, I want to thank my family. I want to thank my mom, my wife, my kids, Xavier, Madison, Josiah. Just want to thank everybody that supported me. We here. We, we swept. We good. North is up. And that was, you're very impressive, man. Congratulations. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Hopefully, uh, you'll still hold on to that title, and we'll see you get a battle ball. Sure. Cool. Awesome, man. Oh, man. Hey, we were looking forward. We were looking forward. Thank you, man. Appreciate you.